So how have you found Nottingham so far then? Really good. Really good. I really enjoy Nottingham. Is it what you expected? Actually, kind of, yeah. I thought it would be like, I know like England is like more of like a little bit older, like buildings and stuff like that. And I I really enjoy it. It's actually a really nice town to be in. I'm glad that you bought that raincoat. Did you say? I'm glad that you bought that raincoat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was my first thing I bought like back home when I know I'm going to be coming here. So right. Speaking of back home, back home is... I'm not now. This now. I'm going to struggle with pronunciations of quite a few things here, so I'm going to apologise right. before we start. <laughs> Gavle? Yeah. Is that how you say? Yeah, it? that's really good. Is that, that, is that close? Yeah, it's good. So is that home? Yes, that's my home. Yeah. So what was what was what's Gavle like? Uh, I would say it's like a pretty. I wouldn't say it's like small, but it's not like big either. It's just like something in between. I would say like it's a great place to be in. Good place to grow up. Yeah, actually really good. It's pretty safe, a lot to do, a lot to see. And of course, like uh, hockey is the main sport in, in Javle, like t- to watch. We actually had like a football team as as well, but they went from the Allsvenskan down to Division 1. So football isn't that huge anymore, but it's it's a great place. So is that where Brynäs are, or is that further out? Did you have to move when you went there? No, Brynäs is uh, in the middle of the town. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it's great. So when did when did you first put on a pair of skates then? What age were you? <sighs> I would say around five, six years old. So I would say that's kind of late, I think. But compared to like other people you knew? Yeah, like... The other people I knew, like in Sweden or like in my hometown, they used to be like skating when they were like three, four years old. So I was a little bit late. And actually when I started, we have a, it's called like Björn Ligan in Swedish. And you're like, just like, the guys have just like started hockey, kind of. And I couldn't skate at all. I was just like standing in the middle and like I could see all of my like friends were just like skating by me and just like scoring goals and my mom and dad I remember they have told me like a couple of years ago we never thought that you would be playing hockey at all but they said also like I had one apple at one game and I was just like so happy and like they could see okay he actually like enjoyed this because like my my mom and dad loves like hockey so so, so it was pretty much with you from when you were born then, if they yes. loved it? Yes, yeah, they were. So, yeah, so it, it, it was great. It was amazing. So do you remember the first time you went to a hockey game then? I, mean, I imagine you went to see Brynäs, <coughs> I imagine it was. Yeah, I did, because like uh, my dad and mom is from Javelis, so they took me to a Brynäs game. So that was probably the first game I, I saw. And yeah, it, it was great. And they, yeah, it was just amazing. Do you remember anything about that game? Actually, I do not remember <laughs> so much. I guess I was probably just like so happy to just like be there and like, like I said, like Brynäs is like the main, like team that people mm. follow in in Javle, So it was just like fun. And when did you get signed into the Brynäs system? I would say like we play until we are like fifteen years old in Sweden, and then you get like selected by. For me, then it was like Brynäs, and you have like different kind of teams in in Sweden. So let's say you are from another town, they also do the same kind of things. You get okay. like selected. So you could have ended up anywhere. Yes, but it used to be like where you're like from okay. to, to a start. But let's say you are around 15 years old and you get selected from a team. They maybe take up players about 30 players. So you do like a summer workout with with the team and then it's gonna be like 20 players when it's all done and that's just like the first step and then it's called like under 16 in, in Swedish and we are going if you are good enough you going to like under 18 and then to under 20 and then you can if you're really really good you get up to the first team so it's like a progress of like so you're always just, just always within the same system. Yes, just, yes. So, but I guess that's quite 
you get quite comfortable with that setup then you get to know the coaches and just everything yeah. about the organization yeah that's true yeah. and then you made you went straight into that junior 18 18 team because the elite prospect sheet just starts at under 16 so yeah. that's all I've got to go yeah, on. yeah, yeah. exactly but, and when you're in that junior under 18 team there's two pretty special players in that team in Christian Juice and I can't what his first name is Limblom who plays yeah, for Oscar, yeah. plays for Philadelphia yeah what do you, do you remember anything about those two guys yeah they are both uh, really good friends to me so I used to chat with them once in a while and they are both like really good players I would say like Christian is one year older than me and uh, Oscar is one year younger than me but Oscar always were playing with our group of like the 95s because he's born 96 but he was like that good so he always played with one year older so I count him as a 95 yeah. so but yeah they are both like really great players and could you tell even at that age that they were special you could see that they were like especially yeah I would say they, you could see that they were a little bit like ahead of the rest of us guys. So, yeah, you, I, I think you could say that. And then that year, you get even get to play in the junior eighteen Alsvenskan as well. Which yeah, I'm I, in the setup of Swedish hockey. Is that yeah. like just the junior version of that? Yes, yeah, so I would say first you have like uh, so you play like uh, the under eighteen. You first have like a team of maybe like ten. And then you play, and then the top five teams goes into like a, so it's gonna be like another top ten with just the the best teams kind of thing. Okay. And then it goes into like playoffs. So if you get like through to be one of the best teams in your like, yeah, group or whatever, you go to the and that's what is called like Allsvenska. And did you always want to be a defenseman? Actually, not. I actually started as a forward. So, I think. I played forward my first like three four years and they all of a sudden we didn't have like we have a couple of d's that were like uh, injured so they just asked me if i could play d for like one or two games and then i actually went down and played i actually thought it was really fun so could you get more ice time when yeah you're kind of yeah <laughs> that that was it yeah so it was just like all of a sudden i would like okay i maybe gonna try to be a defensive guy instead so and then you work your way through that Brinner system you get playoff experience at the junior levels what did you what would you say the main things you learnt were within that system <sighs> me as a player yeah I would say I mean to be like a young guy you always have like dreams of you want to play like in NHL that's I would say it's everyone's dream but I would say like the thing I learned from like going all of these steps, it's like it's really hard and you really have to work hard and you have to earn your spots and like all of that kind of stuff. And I would say too like in Sweden we have a lot of coaches that are really good of like learning people in good age how you they want you to like act on the on the ice. Oh like the, the fundamentals, the basics of everything. Yes, exactly. So I would say like one of the sweetest best like things about hockey is that you have so many good coaches that makes a lot of time for for the young kids and players to actually like improve. So And then in the fourteen fifteen season you get to wear an A on your shirt whilst playing for Brinnes. And you also got another teammate who's a pretty sure he's in the NHL now or he's been drafted to the NHL in yes with Bockfist. Yeah. What do you remember about him? I mean, he he was really good. I mean, he is, yeah, people have probably like seen him, but he's really talented, like great, great speed, good stick handling. And I think he actually have like the record for, at his age in, I think under 18 with like points. So he was a huge talent when he came to Brunus. He's actually from, from Lexan. Oh, okay. Kind of thing. So, so he's one of those guys who got brought in to that system. Yes. So, yeah, but he's an amazing player. And then, the, and then that same year, you get to make your SHL debut, which I imagine is if you grew up in that town with that team. Yeah. That was such a special moment for you. It was. Do you remember the phone? Was it a phone call or a text or? It was really fun because I. I actually were like in 
preseason as well. And it was actually a kind of fun story because I was up like practice with them. And actually we had like one drill where it was like two on one or whatever. So I, it was a guy who just like dumped the puck and he tried to like hit me because I, I'm a junior player. They are a little bit like more rough to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of like blood you yeah, in. Yeah, he, wa- he wasn't ready. So I did like an offensive like hit on him and I, I accidented, accidentally hit his nose so he actually broke his nose (laughs) so and then it was so funny because like the guys were just like laughing because all of a sudden it ended up that i was playing like the first preseason game because he was injured so (laughs) it was just like a little bit fun but yeah of course it was like amazing because when i actually had to do my my real debut if you could say that when it actually like counted like into the so the record books yeah counted. exactly it was like huge and remember i have like all of my family on the in the stands and it was just like amazing to just have been for that playing for that team in like five seasons because you can only have been 19 or 20 when that happened yes i was just 19 i think so of course it was a really special moment for me and like for my family as well and to put on like the the big jersey, if you could say like that. So yeah, it was really special. And then, do you remember anything about that game? Like, do you remember your first shift? Were, were you nervous going in? Did you? Did, how did you sleep the day before? I mean, I, I was really nervous. I'm actually a really nervous guy when it comes to like games and stuff. Like, and of course it was like a huge deal for me. Mm. And of course you don't wanna be bad. And you don't wanna let down the team in some kind of way. So it was like a lot of thoughts, but I would say like you have the mentality when actually the game starts, you have like a switch you can switch on and you feel like, okay, just like relax, have fun and like do the stuff that you know that you are good at. And it used to be a good result. And then was that first game, was it, I assume your your family were there, was that at home? As well. it was, yes, it was. And then you must have been pressed someone because you stuck around for the playoffs in the SHL as well, which as a 19-year-old is no mean feat. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that year we had, we actually, they switched the coach. So I remember my first like meeting with a new coach. I was up doing some practices and he came to me and said like, yeah, I think you're like doing really good. And I just want you to know that you're up here because you're doing your stuff and I don't want you to like try to be anyone else or like Mm. just like do the things that you are good at because that's why you're here so he was I think for me as a young player to have like a coach that actually came to me and like talk to me to like you feel way more like relaxed and you know that you can do your own things and just doesn't have to feel okay I'm gonna do this and this so and what do you remember about, like, obviously, when the playoffs come around, the competition intensifies, everything everything is magnified. What yeah. do you remember about going into a playoff situation <sighs> at, at 19? Yeah, I mean, I was really nervous. We got, we had Furiestal, it's called. I think they haven't missed, like, the playoffs in 20 years. So, of course, they were a really good team. And, like you said, to be, like, a young player coming in, like, the game is so different when it's playoffs in Sweden. Everything gets like harder, everything gets like, yeah. It's, yeah, it was a totally different hockey. And it, it was really fun to play. And actually we beat Ferriestas. We actually went into the to the real playoffs because it's like called played, played in. Oh, okay, so you got, was that a one-off game or is that? Yes. A- Oh, actually, we played best out of three. Oh, okay. So we beat them two games. So we actually went through. But, of course, it's like, it was special. And then you picked up your first two professional points in those playoffs. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a really hard question. Now. Do you remember either of them? <sighs> Not so, so sometimes, it, sometimes it sticks in guys' yeah. heads. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I remember I just, like, I had so much, like, energy and I think I played like really good but I don't think it was like any like really amazing points I did it was just more like playing easy plays Mm. I mean when you play with such good players that can do like skilled plays 
doesn't always have to be like a breakaway pass to have an apple or whatever. So I don't I actually don't remember exactly, but of course it's always fun to like be a part to like help the team with some points. So you that's you get knocked out of the playoffs. You turn twenty in May. You've just made your debut for your hometown team, and you decide to leave the country and go and play for Medvedek. Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I did really well when I was playing for Brinas. Unfortunately for, for my part, they had a lot of good defenders. So they didn't have a spot for me. So I was just feeling, okay, I really wanted to stay. And I think I did. Well, because at that point, that's all you've known. You've yes, known exactly, him. yeah. And I had a couple of other teams that wanted me but i was just like okay it was like mentally for me so much to take in you know when you're like young player come up playing like shl and all of that stuff and all of a sudden i i got a call from my agent and he said that one guy have called him and that they have seen me play in shl and that was a medlechuk then and they wanted me to come over and what people don't know about that the team that I went to, that I actually went there on a tryout first. Okay, because this is when they were a KHL side. This exactly. Is, this is before yeah. they're in the Ebor, this is this is in the le- the second best league in yeah. the world now. Yeah. So of course, when I see it like on paper, okay, it's like a big big step, and I'm still like so young, and yeah all of that kind of thing so it was just like crazy but like i said that people don't know that i went there on a tryout first so we were about like 30 players that only like three or four guys actually gonna make the team oh wow so i guess i did pretty good that they (laughs) they wanted to keep me yeah so but like you said it's it's a big step to go that being so young and go to like the second best Uh league in the world especially as like european players don't necessarily move around as much as north americans either yeah. so was that was it just you wanting to you you, you spent all these years within the british system was that just you wanting to try something different yes kind of yeah get out um, of sweden and try yeah it, for me i think it was both like hockey wise that i wanted to try something different and like for me as a person too i like adventures i like to see new things like learn and for me it was like a great opportunity and i felt like when i went there okay i'm gonna try to do my best and get into the khl and if i don't I, i'm gonna have one more experience hmm. because i still thought that okay I could maybe get like a team in sweden or but i wanted to make like an effort to try to get into the khl and then as someone who likes adventures what what, what did you like most about croatia Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if that was negative or positive. Uh, it, it's positive. I I have to say I love Croatia. It's a great city to be in. I mean, great weather. Like the city was amazing. Like really nice people. Great food. And then they have like all of these coasts that you could go to. Okay. To like yeah swim or like they have a pretty nice landscape and all of with like mountains and stuff. So. It was an amazing place to be. What was the rink like there? The rink was was decent. I wouldn't say it's like super good, but it wasn't like super bad either. Something. Does it compare to this one? I would say this rink is is way better. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's nice to hear that against the cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when you're with Medvedev, I've got a few two EIHL related names. You may or may not have come across. Them. I don't know when they came yeah. in or when you left. Them. First one is Alex Bolduc. Yeah. He played here last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah. What do you remember about Alex? Because he was a character from what I remember about Yeah, him. he was a great guy, I would say. I didn't, like, hang around, like, so much around him, but he was a great guy, great person, great player. And, I mean, he had good... He had been, like, through a lot of games and stuff so he had good experience and And having watched him in practice you can't have enjoyed going up against him there (laughs) (laughs) but he was a really nice guy i mean like like i said earlier like to be like young 
you try to get like experience from the guys mm. that have been playing for a while and like it, it's huge and like he was a really nice guy and gave me like tips and like that kind of stuff like and then we'll go we'll go away from the Panthers and go to the Sheffield Steelers this is the first time you come across Tom Zanoski yeah I mean yeah Tommy he's a uh, he's a really funny guy yeah great guy he was actually I think he's Canadian and Croatian so he, yeah. he speaks like both both languages and when I first arrived to like Zagreb he was like showing me around like talk to me help me with all of the stuff oh, that's awesome yeah so he was a really really good guy and always wanted to help so i've just good things to say about him and then you had 20 games with the the big team that year yeah. so this has got you down as playing in medvedek zagreb 2 but it's got no stats right now yeah. did, did you play any other games in the lower division or <sighs> they have like they have after the season they play like uh kind of in Croatia it's just okay. like the Croatian teams and they always have like kind of the new guys are s- okay. staying because it was like it was like money wise if they win this they get like money from the government in Croatia kind of thing so they always had like a couple of guys from the team that stayed and helped them to like kind of win it so it was been quite fun yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was, like, different, but, yeah, it was fun. And then what, what would you say the biggest thing you learned as not only a player, but as a professional while you were out there? We had, like... Because going away from home at that age, you yeah, learn a lot about yeah, yourself. Yeah. And that was also, like, with the adventure I talked to earlier. For me as a person, I grow a lot. And I had a couple of Swedish guys there as well that took care of me. I know I had one guy, Edwin Hedberg is called. He was playing there. He came the year before me. We actually got uh, a guy they call Andreas Jemtin. Oh, the former Steeler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also him, yeah. So they took care of me from day one. And it was fun to see because I'm just used to like the Swedish kind of tradition as what you do like before games, stuff like that. But to see like, because it's a, totally different league in KHL a lot of traveling like staying at hotels you, you well, got the, the teams are so far because it's cross yeah. co- the teams are in different countries yeah you're always going does that yeah, mean they've exactly. even got a team near China haven't they yeah I know so I think the longest trip we had was like 19 hours of <sighs> flight and then you're gonna go out and kind of play and then you have like the time change as well so I could say like you were you felt like a zombie when you play like nothing worked at all you just like felt you both it's gonna react yeah it was just like but what i learned is like take care of your body like eating well like get rest when you you're gonna rest and like and they they were always like helpful and like i said like to get experience from the guys that have been through and like playing a lot of games a lot of different leagues was uh, really helpful and then from talking to you previously, I know that Yamtin's a guy that you spoke to before you came to the Elite League because yeah. you knew he played here. Yeah. What did he tell you about this place? No, but he said it was like great, great league. And of course he said like, it's pretty loudy sometimes. And I said that, yeah, nothing in pants would say like, because he was a Sheffield player. <laughs> he said that those games are like crazy and you, you can't like, you don't see that in Sweden like they're so loud like they so passionate about like the game who's gonna win that kind of stuff but i only heard like good things about this league and he said it's like a really upcoming league and it's it's a really good league with uh, a lot of good players so then you scored your first professional goal in the khl yeah you have to remember that one yeah it, it was special i i remember i actually got the the pass from bolduc okay yeah so i actually went down in the corner he was on his way up to the blue line and he just like uh, dropped the puck to me and i just like went uh, behind the net and i just like okay i'm just gonna fire fire this one so i just like turn around and it just fired into the top corner and it was like really special and like i know all of the guys in the team were just like yeah cheering and like just came to me and just like give me a hug and like yeah and now actually at that time they all called me like young d because I was like a young guy and 
and my last name was like Deutsch, <laughs> so it it was special. And do you still have the pub? Or? I still do it. I, I still have it at home. Yeah, I have. It. Is it on the on a shelf or is it in a drawer or is it? No, it's uh, it's on the shelf. So it's a, have a special place in, in my home back home. So. And then when you leave that year, you, you spend one year in Croatia. Then you decide to go back to Sweden. Yeah. To Almtuna. Yeah. How did that process come? Were you, were you in Was there no discussions about staying in Croatia, even though you had such a good time? I was really enjoying it there. I actually had like a meeting with the with the GM after the season, and he said that he thought I played really well, and he wanted to keep me for another year. And I felt like I w- could easily have stayed, but I felt like to be so so young, I needed to play games. Oh, log more minutes. Yeah. Actually. So I'm only registered for 20 games, but I actually were like, they're playing 60 games in KHL. Oh, okay, so you're was, a healthy scratch. Y- yeah, I was always dressed, but if you're going to get a game, you have to have ice time. So I was oh, okay. always dressed, but I didn't play all of the games. So I felt like, yeah, of course it would be really cool to stay and still like playing in the KHL and stuff like that, but I have always been like, don't need the status of like what league I'm playing in. Yeah, I you just want to like improve my own game. So I felt like for my own perspective, I felt like it would be better for me to go home, play a lot of games to. So that's why you made the drop to the Alsvenska? Yes. So I actually had like a couple of SHL teams. When I went back, they wanted to maybe sign me and I felt like I need to know that I'm gonna be a player that actually gonna get the chance to play and play a lot of games. And they, of course, said uh, we can't like give you that right away. So I felt like for me it would be a better decision to go down to Allsvenskan and knowing that I'm gonna play a lot of games and a lot of minutes and that kind of stuff. And what was that year in? Obviously, in Almtuna, you come across one of your current teammates in William Quist. Yeah. So, what do you remember about the first time you met William? Uh, I mean, we. This back when, I think this was back when he had long hair, wasn't it? Yeah, he? he had like a sick haircut. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was a really nice person from day one. I think we connected pretty good. We were sitting like pretty close to each other in the dressing room, so we had could like talk easily. So, but he's a great guy, great player. And so having him here must have made the transition to here a bit easier as well. Yeah, of course. It's like a, I mean, you got to see plenty of familiar faces when you came back to Nottingham. Yeah, I did. But I mean, it's always nice to have someone with your own first language mm. to like have the security to be able to like, if I didn't don't understand anything or whatever that I can like ask him in Swedish and like stuff like that. And you also had former Cardiff Devil David Bryan on that team. Yeah. What do you remember about him? I mean, also a nice guy. I mean, like a lot of guys that I played with, and like get to know, always like nice guys. Well, there are, I think that the thing just seems to come with being a hockey player. Like, I've done this for two almost two years now. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's not nice and involved yeah. in ice hockey. But I would say like everyone, like as a hockey player, you are in the same situation. You know that you're moving from home. You maybe you meet new people like every year. So I just think like you get like really close to your teammates and you get like bonding pretty fast and like you get like as a second family. So and then that year you without with Almtuna you do make it to the playoffs. You get knocked out in the qualification round, I think, because you only played yeah. the three the yeah. three games. What do you remember? What do you remember about that year in Almtuna? I think I remember I started the season pretty good. And then we got like a coach got fired and we brought a new guy in. And after that, it wasn't like the same for me. So I didn't, you didn't enjoy it as much. No, I didn't enjoy it. And like the things that I wanted to come there for, I didn't got it after like the, the coach got fired. So it was like a tough, tough season, but you can always learn something about every season. And I still like worked out hard and I knew what I can do on the ice and sometimes you have like things that you can't control 
and you you just have to do the best of the situation. Was like a quote that one of my favorite quotes is from uh, Denzel Washington, where he says, "You've got to do what you have to do yeah. so you can do what you want to yeah. do." Yeah, it's yeah, one of my favorite ones. One, yeah, and so and you got to log all the minutes that you wanted to in Alton. You got, yeah. I imagine, you got to put in all the big situations yeah. on penalty kill. Yeah. Maybe not so much on the power play yeah. as you probably would have wanted, because yeah. I know you were pigeonholed when yeah. you were in Sweden as yeah. a. You are a shutdown guy. Yeah, that's exactly. what you have to do. Yeah, I know that's the role you've kind of been put in lately. Yeah. Uh, you and Jason have yeah. been uh, tasked with shutting down yeah. a lot of opposition defense yeah. uh, top lines yeah. at the minute. Yeah, so I'm pretty familiar with that kind of role, and I've always been like a team player, and you always do everything for the team because it's always if the team gets success, you, your own success is coming from the team doing great. So. It's always important to whatever role or situation you're playing, you have to do like your best and like get the team to to win games. That's yeah. what it all com- comes down to. And I'm sure there's, there's nothing quite like scoring a goal, but I imagine the, the personal sense of satisfaction that you will feel if you should successfully shut down a top line of the opposition, while the youth, the instant euphoria won't isn't necessarily there. I imagine the personal pride is. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's always special to score goals and like making points, and that's what get like maybe the big sentences or whatever in like newspaper and that kind of stuff. And you like as a shutdown defenseman or whatever, you maybe don't get like the big, the headlines. Yeah, exactly. But like you said, it's always like a you always like proud when you know that you go out and you shut down their best lines, and you know like that you have done a good job, and actually like. The guys in the team and like the coaches also know okay mm. you have done a good job so it's it, but it's always like yeah. how much is fun in its own way yeah of course and then you then the season with Almtuna finishes and it's back to Croatia again yeah. was it was that was that always on your mind to go back out there or was it because they dropped down dropped out of the cage and got into the e that yeah. you decided to go back yeah I mean I always wanted to go back to Croatia because I, I really enjoyed the, the Did you city. think you go back so soon? Actually no. It was just like it was kind of the same thing that happened first time. I just got a call from my agent and they wanted me to come back and play. Now like you said they dropped down to Abel instead of the Austrian league instead of playing the KHL. And I also felt like okay now I have played like one year in KHL, I've tried SHL, I have tried like Swedish second league so i felt like okay it would be nice to get like a new adventure again and like a new league and it was when i came there like it was also like an upcoming league starting to get like bigger and bigger and like a lot of good players were actually coming to austria so and because you would have played against guys like john rowe brian connolly and, yeah. and jason de Santos. yeah so at that time, I didn't know them, yeah. of course, but yeah, it's... When you look it, back on it, I imagine yeah, it's quite... Yeah, it's always like fun, like these days, I mean, you always talk like in the dressing room, yeah, you remember when we played against you guys, and you remember the stuff, but the, at that time, you didn't know like yeah. the players, so yeah, but it's always fun. And then you got you welcome back by Tom Zanowski, now we're going to get into some goaltenders in Medvedek. We'll start with Kevin Poulin, yeah. who's quite... He's, had a lot of NHL games and things yeah. like that. He must have been pretty special to have as a teammate. Yeah, he was really special. I would say when he when he came, the first game we played against Vienna Capitals was one of the best teams in 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 the league. That was just I didn't know anything about uh, Kevin at all. Just more than I heard. Okay, he has played in the show and he he's a great player. And I remember we won that game with like one nothing, and I think he saved literally 51 shots and I was oh, like holy this guy is insane but you could see like when you have a goal is that it seems like the pucks goes in slow motion for him and I remember like sometimes at practice we were doing like slap slap shots and he was just like standing still just like boom <laughs> like boom and you felt like the worst player <laughs> ever because he didn't like even move or didn't even like try to just like save the pucks so it's yeah, he was re- and a really nice person as well. And then another goalie, one that you're quite familiar with this year, is Kevin Carr. Yeah, and also 
sick goalie. I mean, like to he's, see, from what, what I notice is he, he's so quick. Yeah, he's, he just moves very yeah. fast. I mean, as a person, he's great, really kind, always nice, great person. And like as a player, yeah, I think all of us have seen what he can do. I mean, the well, I think you were on the ice for that save on Saturday yeah, night yeah, against Sheffield. Was, yeah, I actually told him like thanks for thanks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, like you said, he's so smooth. It's just like, uh, he's really good. And as, a, as a defensive guy, I enjoy when goalies are really good with like the stick handling. And I think okay. Kevin is really, really good with his stick. Yeah, he's quick to come out of his goal and yeah. make a play and things. Yeah, like that. and he always like talks to the D's as well. And we have like a great connection. He knows what the D's are thinking, and we know what he's thinking. And then it's like so much easier to play. And did you did you strike up a friendship with him in Zagreb? Yeah, we we were good friends uh, in Zagreb. I think he came. He wasn't there from the start of the season. He came. I think he know. started. I think he started in the ECHL and then he went out there towards exactly, the back yeah, end of the yeah. year. And he, like I said, we were bonding like pretty pretty fast. I mean, like when a new guy comes in, I mean, like we are like a family, so you always take care of like the new guys that are coming in that are isn't there from the beginning, and. Like I said, he's a really nice guy, and he fit fitted like really good in the group. And I can't remember who signed first here. I can't remember if it was you or him. But when you noticed, when you realized that you were going to be on the same team again, that yeah. must have been pretty cool. Yeah, of course. It's always nice to when you like playing for new teams that you have people like familiar faces that you already know since before. And like I said, I don't know if I signed first or him, but of course, when you when you knew that. He's gonna be here, and then when you knew that Quist is gonna be here, like it's always gets a little bit easier from the beginning that you have people that you already know. But like I said, the guys that have been here like before, they were really nice and took everybody into their, like so you feel like you're a family already from the start when you get here. And what must have been really cool for you when you arrived here? I know it's unfortunate that Jens moved on to another adventures and things yeah. but when you get to come and play with a guy who is I think he's the 13th all time top point scorer in the Alsvenska yeah. he, he must have a bit of a legend about his name in Sweden kind of thing yeah I, I mean I didn't know him before I came here but of course you knew his name mm. that he's he's a big shot like in, in Sweden because like all of the things and the things he ever achieved and of course you could see he's a great player and it just he, doesn't work sometimes, does yeah, it? Yeah, and that's that's also like with this as a hockey player, even how much you practice and everything, sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it works. So it's like a it's it's hard, but unfortunately for him it didn't work out this time. But I mean, he's a great player and you you could see that he has a lot of mm. tools in his in his box, so it's good to have that to have that experienced head in early on as well to help guys you know settle and you can always share everything he's learned can't yeah. and things yeah and that's also what I like like I've told before like to to get things of the experienced guys because wherever you are you can always learn like people have been through stuff that you never thought they would mm. have been through and you can always learn a, something. To every one that you meet, you can like, always learn something. And then you re-signed in Zagreb. Well, what were you, were you just was there just no question you might not want to stay here? I really love this place. Yeah, I mean, I I had a good year. I played a lot, and during that, in the end of the season, I started to get into the power play as well. Oh, okay. I started to get like so. I felt like I got like a big shot there to really show what you could do yeah exactly so i felt like it, i i want to stay for one more year and see what i can do and then that year when you stay you get joined by sebastian Silvestra, who absolutely tore this league to pieces when he played for belfast yeah. as an offensive talent he's incredible isn't he yeah i mean you could see like already from the start that this guy has some really good offensive like skills his stick handling and you could see some guys just know where to be i would say like jake hansen he always like in our team now he scores from and, and everything it must it's be like, it must be terrifying to see him and sam yeah. come down the ice together yeah that's what, <laughs> what i mean like and you could see like they it's a 
great speciality to have. And I think he was kind of the same Sylvester that he could sniff out these like pucks and, and score goals. And then you've also got a guy who you just played against in John Armstrong. Yeah. It must be fun to go up against him. Yeah, it's it's always fun to li- like play against uh, your former teammates. Actually, that second year we actually brought in like the Nikolai. He was playing for Sheffield, the Russian guy. Oh, Lemchigo. Yeah, he was there as well. He's a good player. Yeah, he is really good. He was really good. Unfortunately, player. he's a very good <laughs> yeah, player. Yeah. So we brought him in like a little bit into the season. You could see like that he was. He just slows well. everything down, doesn't he? When yeah. He's out there, it just. Yeah, but I mean, like you said, it's always fun to play against your former teammates, and of course, like when you see them like after games or whatever, you shit chat a little bit and you like talking. I mean, on the ice we're enemies, but off the ice you you're always like friends. That's the great thing about this sport, isn't it? That the, 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 on the ice, it's such a battle. But yeah. when they get off it, everyone, everyone knows that, that that's where the line yeah. kind of yeah. ends kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that's like important to have as a, as a hockey player, that you have like this, this switch that when you are on the ice, it's like, it's like a battlefield. Like they are your enemies and you're going to try to win. But as soon as the, clo- the bell rings or whatever, it's, we're still like friends. And I think it's important to understand when to be friends and when to be like professional on mm. the ice. So, and another guy uh, on your team that year, very well known to Panthers fans, is Jan Sorve. Yeah, great player. Yeah, really good player. You must have learned a lot from him as another left shot defenseman. <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, like I've said so many times before, you, you learn of those players that you can see. Okay, I see what he does and what works for him and try to learn the same kind of things like i said he's also like a great guy easy to talk to and he wants to learn out but he knows and i talked like really much with him and he i think i got better just like being around him and did you talk to him about the elite league did you, you, you when nottingham come calling did you get back in touch with jan because you knew he played here not so much because when when we got like uh, away from each other from in Ebel, when everybody w- just went to like different places, because unfortunately yeah. that team uh, blew up kind of thing. Yeah, for the financial issues it yeah it, it wasn't exactly it yeah wasn't sustainable. Yeah, and then I mean with like phone numbers and stuff because some guys had like Croatian numbers and then you're gonna try to get their new numbers. So it's like sometimes you kind of lose touch. Kind yeah. Of thing. So what, what what was that like when you get that? Did, were you all told in a team meeting, or was it or was it a like a message, an email that got sent around? Yeah, it was. We had like a team meeting. It was just like you could feel that it was kind of coming, but not the way it were because it you was thought it'd like, be the end of the season. Exactly, but one, all of a sudden you get like a text that okay, we're gonna have a meeting at the rink at four o'clock, and you, of course you didn't know exactly what it should be everybody was down there and they just said okay this is the situation and this is and yeah we're not gonna be playing anymore so you guys need to find new teams and stuff like that so how quick from that happening were you then out of croatia because I, I know these things happen very fast yeah when they do so i would say probably about three four days i was back home in sweden must have been tough to because I know obviously you you can tell just from talking to you you love Croatia you you seem to really like that and you like that team as well yeah I mean it was a little bit tough and it was like a new situation for me because I've never been into a team where something that like that happened so it was like okay what's gonna happen now are you gonna finish the season in some other team are you gonna like start with like the summer workout what's gonna happen next and it was a lot of questions so but yeah i just went home got like thinking of other things and like settled down a little bit and just like try to take in what's just happened and then but it worked out pretty good for me how quickly did the opportunity with brinus come around <sighs> i would say i think i was home maybe the f- 17th of December 
and I think I signed a contract with Brinus on 7th of January. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like... It wasn't too long. No. So... And you must have been excited to go back to your hometown. And was that just an exclusive SHL deal? Yeah, I mean, they had a couple of guys that were injured at the time. So at first they wanted to sign me on like a three-week deal. But then I think they thought that I did good. So they wanted to keep me for the rest of the season. And for me, that was like really huge because now I was a couple of years older. I have learned some more things and um, I wasn't the same player n like last year that I was like a couple of years ago. So it was actually fun to come home because Javli is that big. So you know, you see, you there's so many faces that you know. Well, like you the, the, the baker. Yeah, the you, you, don't, you don't know maybe all of the names, but you know the faces. So it was all really fun to come home and like, because I haven't been playing in Sweden for a while and to like be in front of like the Swedish like public again with the newspapers and like the fans, like all of that kind of stuff to show them like what kind of player I am right now compared to the player I were like four, uh, a couple of years ago. And then when you went back to Brynäs, you managed to score your first SHL goal, yeah. which must have been really special for you. And I've seen this on a video, so well, yeah. I'm going to actually talk me through it and I'm going to tell you if you're lying or not. Uh, I mean, of course. <laughs> and, and I'm going to put it in the yeah. corner next yeah, to you while yeah. you're talking about it. I mean, that, that was special. I, I remember it like, I think I remember it kind of good. I think I was just like coming up like late. I got a late pass on kind of the blue line. It was just like trying to follow the play. And I saw, okay, I'm I'm gonna try to fire this one on net, and I actually felt that he like screened the goalie, so if I can just like get this one through, the goalie is just gonna doesn't gonna see anything, so I just fired it, and I didn't hear like it touched anything, and I just felt okay this could get in, and all of a sudden I got like a big hit exactly when I shoot, yes. <laughs> so I, so I don't even see the puck goes in, and then like all of a sudden like the guys were like laying down over me kind of thing and just like yeah it, w it was special it is, that was... is that another one you've still got on the shelf or what did you say is that another one you've still got on the shelf yeah so i got the uh... so what's what's more special first goal in the shl or first professional goal in the khl i mean i mean it, that's a hard question yeah it's like two different stories i would say because when i scored in khl i actually were like the youngest swede that ever scored oh wow in khl so that's a good moment th yeah so that's really special but i mean to be home playing from my family and friends and to come back and play again for for my hometown team and to score it was really special it's as well tough to beat that. so i would say it's like two different stories behind mm. the feelings and then you've again you've you've went there. You played seventeen games. You've shown you can play at the SHL level. I think you averaged about ten minutes a, yeah. a game, if if what I've read, yeah. Re yeah. if the summer is correct. Yeah. Were you not tempted to stay there? <sighs> I were. I I actually felt like like the first time. But not playing enough, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to play more, and I also felt like I'm good enough to play in the Swedish Elite League. That's my feeling. Mm. But like I said, that league started to become like younger and younger and we have so many good like Swedish players, like young players. Well, it's like you said to me before about the everyone comes up through the, the camps or the schools. Or exactly, something. yeah. So it's kind of hard because you can see like in Sweden these days, even if you like, I would say you're best around 26 27 28 but those players are kind of old now in sweden if, even if you have a great season in maybe allsvenskan the league underneath like shl and you're like 27 they think okay it's a little bit maybe works maybe doesn't because it's like oh they want to have like younger guys and i felt like i'm good enough to stay but i need to get the right I need to get the ice time. I'm still like young, and I need and I wanted to break out to be like an offensive guy as well mm -hmm. because I knew 
and I had played like in so many teams that so they just wanted me to be like a defensive guy, which I knew I'm good defensively, but I want to improve my game and try to be good offensively and still be good defensively. So that's what I wanted to be in. Is there a fear that like when you get like in that Alzheimer's system, is there like a fear that you just get stuck there and that's where you'll be forever kind of thing? Um, both yes and no. If you have like a really good season, it, it could go pretty fast up to the SHL. But like I said too, if <laughs> you need to have a really good season or you could be like stuck. And for me that had played in all of the rings in Sweden since I were like 16 years old. I felt like I want an adventure. I want to see the world. I want to try the hockey in different countries. I want to learn, see stuff. And for me personally, I think like for me to improve my game, I think I enjoy it more like out in Europe and stay, staying at home. Well, Sweden. Sweden's a bit more... I think I think when we talked a few weeks back, you said it's a bit more structured out there. Yeah. This is just what you do. This is how you do it, and you don't do anything else. This is yeah. otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. So literally in Sweden, it's started to become a really like defensive league, and like you could literally have a video meeting if you have your stick in the wrong position. Ooh. So, and I felt like I want to have have fun, and mm. I want to like improve my game of having like try get to try new things because in Sweden it's if you make a few mistakes you could maybe get benched because you don't you you're not supposed to try a toe drag on the blue line if it does if it works you're a genius if you if it doesn't work you're an idiot and then you can then you're sitting so I think for me to improve as a player is that okay I can maybe do some mistakes but you need to be somewhere where you can make a mistake, but you don't. You can't. Be, where you're not necessarily going to be punished for trying yeah, something. Different. Exactly, and that's what I felt like. I want, and I think like in Sweden that they are way more like you need to do this, this, and this, and if you don't do that, then you're not playing. And then when 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 you get the opportunity from the elite league, how, how aware of you before you got the call? Was it Tim or Gee that got in touch with you? Uh, it was Tim. How aware of you of the Elite League were you before that phone call? I'm going to be honest and say that I didn't know, like, too much. And I knew a little bit because I knew, like... Because you guys like so many Yeah, people, like. yeah, and Jam Teen. And I had a couple of guys that I actually knew that had played here. And they only say, said, like, good things. And it was nice to hear from Tim because I actually played with Tim when I got up to the first team. Brian is my... When I was junior... What do you remember about him? I mean, he was a really funny guy. He was kind of the... Well, he, bit of the he's a bit of a character now. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He's really funny. And I wouldn't say he's kind of like a, a clown, but he's like making jokes and like having fun, like loosening it up a little bit. Yeah, he, he he's a very positive person. <clears throat> yeah, he is. And especially when, when we went through that run yeah. of where we won one in ten. Yeah, yeah. Like you could tell, his energy. Yeah. He is such a positive person yeah. that even though we won one game in yeah. ten, none of you guys were. Yeah. None of your heads were down. You're no. all. We're yeah. gonna get out of this. We know yeah. who we are. And I would say that's one of his biggest like mm. assets that he's always like. Because what he, he went through, he, get, he giving like energy all mm. of the time, and I remember that from playing with him like in Brinas as well. I mean, like just to be around him, you get a lot of energy and you're laughing and like I said he loses up things that you're mm. like you can be like confident you can be like a little bit more loose even if it doesn't go as planned sometimes you doesn't have to like hang your head and feel like heavy you still can like feel like a little bit loose and like and he's a really yeah. smart when you talk to, when you <coughs> talk hockey with him he's he's just next level his mind yeah. his mind is yeah is, is somewhere else yeah he's a big tactical guy so, I um, remember when I did the, uh, the first one of these with Jason. He was saying that all of the because they played together in the AHL. Yeah. He said that all of the things that Tim does, they're all like NHL drawn up yeah. plays and stuff. And he just seems like a real hockey, you know, kind of geek kind of yeah, thing, which is just yeah. what you want. I, I've heard of those as well. So <laughs> that's funny though. And then you have your conversation with Tim, your initial conversation. How long was it bef between speaking to him for the first time 
and you decided this is somewhere where you want to come and play? I don't know exactly, but I remember him like calling me and said like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be head coach for the Nottingham Panthers. And it's literally the best place to be. And as soon so as he said bad, that- It's not bad for a former Steeler to say. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I, of course you get like excited just to hear that. And he was sending me like a video of like yeah, a little bit of the town, the ring, like the fans and that kind of stuff. And I think every time we call each other, we had a great talk and he was explaining for me what he saw me as a player. He had like seen my games, he had seen the kind of playing style I am and all of that kind of stuff. And of course, because I knew him a little bit from before, to have like a guy that you he, feel like, okay, he, he trusts you, he wanna give you the chance and that kind of stuff. So, but I wouldn't say it took like that long, maybe. Because what were the offers from all the leagues around? Like, were there, because you said you wanted to get back into the adventure and get back out into yeah. Europe. Were there like was was the evil calling again? Was it was it like France or something like that? Uh, I had like a <coughs> few teams. I don't want to say exactly the names no, of no, it, no. but it was a little bit Denmark, mm, yeah, and a couple of other as well. But I felt like because I knew Tim as a person, I knew what he stands for mm. and I knew that he really wanted me like really bad and he made sure that I knew that he wanted me here and that he thought that he as a coach could improve me and improve my game so I was really excited to hear what he was like planning for me and like what he saw me as a player how I could improve and what he could help with because like he has great experience as well mm. So, he's played at the highest level yeah exactly so he had a lot to bring to the table for me to improve my game and i felt like as soon as he called me it felt like it felt just right hmm. sometimes you just feel like you got a good, good feeling yeah so i got a good feeling and it didn't took that long until i i signed here and then when you get to nottingham you have that first day where you have, <coughs> you have that big team meeting what was the first thing you remember about getting to the arena I was just thinking, wow, actually, I thought it was like, I saw the video he sent me, but it was just like crazy. Everything felt like I knew it was professional, but I didn't knew it was like this professional with everything. I, the locker room was amazing. I mean, everything was. Goody makes sure that's pretty nice. <coughs> yeah, 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 he did. We give, we, we give Goody a shout. He likes being <laughs> yeah, mentioned yeah. in these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, Goody. He's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Goody. He, he's a great guy. He take care of you, does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> no, but I mean, the arena was amazing. That was the first thing. And then I actually thought, like, I'm going to be honest, it was a lot of doors as well. When, <laughs> I, when I was walking, and I was like, oh, this is like a labyrinth. I, I can't get to the dressing room. But yeah, but everything was just like the way I wanted it to be. But still like when you have like a picture in your head of what you thought it could be mm. and then you, when you came and you see like okay this is everything that i wanted it's just like it gets like the experience like oh wow it's it's just great and then the preseason games come along the early season you got off to a really hot start here yeah. i think you got two goals in the preseason you had yeah. that game in dundee where yeah. you got two goals so you kind of adjusted to this style so this is it's kind of a blend of European and North American, yeah. With because you have a lot of the North American players, so it's quite physical. But yeah. you're on the big ice pad, so yeah. skill matters. Yeah. So how did you find the? Obviously, you you took it to it like a duck to water, but how did you find the adjustment to the elite league style? Uh, I mean, the way Tim wants the team to play, I've a little bit like familiar. Hmm. I mean, we actually had a guy in in. Uh, Croatia as well they wanted it wasn't exactly the same but they had the same kind of mindset the coach yeah Not Aaron Fox no it wasn't Fox we had like a guy that came in the year oh, before sorry. it's called Doug Bradley it okay. was called so he wanted to play I think he also were in the Pittsburgh organization oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it's starting to know it's a theme with yeah that, so it was like <laughs> I was familiar with a lot of things not everything but a lot of things that made it easier for me to like get into the game like right away 
but then it's always like what I wasn't used to playing here was you always play like Saturday Sunday yeah and all of the other leagues I played you maybe play like Tuesday Thursday Friday or Saturday um, two games a week but like different days never never like consistently Saturday Sunday, <coughs> Saturday, yeah Saturday, exactly Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. so for me to play like Saturday Sunday was like probably like the biggest change for me because like the rings are all kind of the same you know, if you don't play in Manchester which is the smallest <laughs> rink I've ever played it's a bit of an every, every <coughs> new guy who goes there always tells us how much of an experience yeah. is I think Tim told me that his first game was yeah. in Manchester yeah I mean it it's it's different hockey there I remember like first time we played against them I think I hit the boys maybe like five six times in warm-up but we just trying to like go to the corner and I was oh <laughs> just trying to stop but yeah that's a good one of the fun things about this league is that every rink you go to it's almost like going to a different place entirely yeah it's, it's every rink has its own its own feel its own yeah. th there's nothing that's everything is is its own place yeah and that's what's fun too like I mean I mean, even you, like going to Belfast is its own yeah. adventure. You have to get on a plane to go there. Yeah. It's but I would say, like, what's really fun with this league, too, is, like, even if you if you play home, you have, like, it's one game. If you play away, it could be a totally different game, like mm. in Manchester. Well, this this weekend, you had the, the exciting game in, in Sheffield. Yeah. And you had that game in Manchester. Yeah, was just, it was like... It was just ugly from every... Yeah, it was just, like, so different. It was totally different games. But, I mean... It's always like fun but sometimes it could be hard to to just like because i'm just so used to play like big rinks and i would say for me with like skating and stuff it's way easier when i have like i know where the board's gonna be and i know like mm. and to be like so small but it it's always fun you mean like you you improve your game still even if you're playing smaller like rinks so and then you also got to experience the continental cup just yeah. a couple of weeks back that was yeah. pretty cool I mean the, the town was what it was <laughs> yeah the town uh, was so so but <coughs> other than that amazing I mean the thing I noticed when we first got it was how much uh, how small the neutral zone was yeah and how big the offensive zones yeah. were you just must have had so much time at the yeah. back end on there yeah but that's what I was saying too it's like everywhere you play it could be different but it's always fun to because you can always learn, even if you're on a big rink, if you're on a smaller, like smaller neutral zone, bigger, like you can always learn. Mm -hmm. And okay. I think in the end, you just need to be smart. And then how much fun was it on that Sunday game against the host team, Sunday yeah. Yuska, with their their fans on the drums, yeah. our fans in the corner? That was a pretty special. Yeah, they were, Sunday. it was really cool. It was really cool. It was. And I remember your, your first like proper game over here was against Sheffield. Yeah. What do you remember about that game, apart from the, the goalie thing? I mean, <laughs> I would say, I mean, it was loud. I I knew, like, I've heard from Jamtin and, like, the players when I came here, like, the rivalry between, like, these two teams are, like, huge. And you're going to hear it's going to be, like, noise. It's going to be, like, a lot of drums. Like, it's going to be... Um, that's also you have a picture in your head mm -hmm. what you think it's gonna be but I would say like it's probably the loudest place I've ever like those games even when we play here or there they, it's so loud but it's always so fun to play because mm -hmm. you get like okay we know this is a huge game and we know like we're not just playing for ourselves we're playing for the fans mm -hmm. and we need to win those games and I would say like every game against Sheffield is gonna be special. And they've all been really close, haven't they? I think the teams just because they're a very offensive team, yeah. and it just becomes this run and gun kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Every time we play on the ice. Yeah. And because of that game against Sheffield, you've already took more penalty minutes in one season than you ever have in your entire yeah. career. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is quite. I think I think actually my dad like I he called me the day after like yeah I think before you signed some of the guys were like texting uh, or like putting on Twitter like oh this is a really like uh, he doesn't get too many like penalties and then my dad called me like oh all of a sudden you're like the most penalized <laughs> guy, <laughs> guy in the league <laughs> so yeah and so you're a guy who likes to 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 adventure but I know I know hockey players never like to you know there's always one game at a time one day at a time is experiencing more of Europe is that something in your long-term plans uh, 
I'm gonna be honest and say that I just trying to live yeah. right now, and I think sometimes you always like. Like I people think have every, a bucket list, don't they? You yeah, want to play here? Yeah, I do yeah that, of so course. Wanna... But I would say like I really enjoy it here, and I love the fans. I love all the people around this like team. I love the coaching coaching stuff and all. You like everything. So right the now, stuff, yeah, yeah, the office stuff <laughs> is also great. So <clears throat> I used to say uh, my heart is here right now, and I don't want to like see so much like. Yeah, you want to look. You want to take it every day at a time. Yeah, everything. exactly. So I think it could be hard sometimes if you like drifting away a little bit mm. that you you like lose your focus a little bit to actually like live now, and I I believe in destiny. Mm. You're gonna you're gonna end up wherever you like life takes you, and for now I'm really happy to be here, and that's the most important. And so you're still you're still you're still a young yeah. defenseman as it is. So what's it like for you to learn uh, learn from a guy like Mark Matheson, who's the player assistant coach? I know he does a lot with the the defense <laughs> and even strikes as well on game days. Yeah, I mean it's always. I mean, you can learn so much of because like, Mark's been everywhere and he's won everything. <coughs> wherever yeah. wherever he's gone, he has won things. Yeah. He, he, you can just see that how time slows down when he has yeah. the puck in, in defense. You've played, yeah. you've played with him a lot this yeah. year as well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like it could be like different sometimes. I, I could see like you could see that he has like experience and he has like when he has the puck, he's like really cool. Like you said, it, sometimes it looks like no one even like tries to take the puck from him, but it's actually that he's so skilled that he just like make the other team look like slow or whatever but yeah you can always learn but you can see that he's has so much experience and he knows when he can do different type of things out there even if it's just like hold on to the puck or when he's gonna get rid of the puck when he can maybe fake a shot and like get a better opportunity mm -hmm. and I think like you said I played a lot with him and we have the same kind of mindset I think and we talk really much like off the ice like on the ice and we're just always trying to make it as easy as possible but like still trying to like improve both our games mm. so if I if I can be better every day I'm gonna make him better every day mm. and if he can be better every day he improves me so it's like vice versa and we always try to talk to each other and see what's what's working what what are not working and like and in the end it's always to have fun and then as an assist, and as he's an assistant coach as well yeah he, the way he carries himself off the ice he, he is the consummate professional isn't yeah. he mark yeah and i mean like i would say like for for the younger guys i come myself as a young guy as well but well, 24 you definitely yeah <laughs> But Somehow from, you're older than Oli Betrich, who's been around here for years. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, let's say me, Oli, like, Kelsal, Hazel, Tets. I mean, we can always learn. Mm. And I mean, to have a guy that is, like, professional, like he is, like, off the ice, on the ice, I mean, we can learn so much and try to, like, take after him. Mm. And... And then when you come into this into this locker room and you meet a guy like Oli Betteridge, a yeah. guy like a guy like Tetz, a guy like Lacko, yeah. w were you expecting the the level of that they are as British players? How? Because I never no, know what people expect of of a British. Because like, normally you'd expect normally you hear like, oh, they're just a workhorse kind of thing. But yeah. people like Lacko has got a lot of skill. Yeah. Oli's got an amazing <laughs> shot on him. Yeah. So I, to, I would say all of the Brits have a great toolbox. I would say like for me as a Swedish player I didn't know so much about like the, the British players mm. but I'm I'm really thinking they all have like great skill sets and I mean they are all like still still young we'll say Lacko still yeah, young, just, to, just to keep yeah, just to boost yeah, his yeah, ego yeah. a little bit yeah <laughs> I, hope, I hope you see this Lacko <laughs> Lacko one of the young Brits yeah, in the league yeah, yeah but I mean like they have a great toolbox and they would they would be really good like outside like this like British hockey as well I think they would do like good in 
Austria, like do, go to Sweden, do good. So I think they are really good, all of them. And I'm, I'm actually surprised how, how good they are. And do, do they make you realize how like special this team is, especially a guy like Oli and Lacco? Lacco's been here 10, yeah. 13, 13 years altogether yeah. now. Oli's, Oli is like Mr. Nottingham Panthers yeah. at this point. Yeah. And what, what, does it, do they make you, how do they like greet you into the locker room kind of thing? Because this is their team. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think the way they are as a person, all mm -hmm. of them are like so kind. And I think they, I mean, they always care. I mean, when we had like uh, in the beginning of the season when we unfortunately like, lose a little bit too much than, than we wanted to, I mean, you could see that they really take it like personally. Mm. They want to win because they are one with the fans. And I mean, I haven't, I have played in different teams when like you have fans and then you have like the players, but they are not as, as, as the same person like here it connected. feels like yeah if we lose they lose as well mm. and i think like they i could see on them that they they took it personally when we when we were losing and they was trying like come on guys we need to like start winning we need to do the right things because like we are not just losing like we're the fans are losing as well mm. and i think like it i haven't seen that before that uh, it, they have so much passion like the hockey here and I hate when we lose because it feels like we the fans losing as well mm. so you always it kind of feels bigger yeah exactly so that feels nice that we have started to win now so they are all also happy because we are happy when we win and they are happy so so even even when we were going through that losing streak, I said so Tim was always saying there were little things he was seeing that were making yeah. it. He knew things were going to turn around. Yeah. He knew, yeah. and then whatever it was, it, it, I think it was that, that goal that Sam scored late yeah. against Fife. Yeah, that kind of like broke the shackles yeah. off of everything. Yeah, and since then, I think we've I think we've yeah. only really failed to take points out of one yeah. game or something like that. Yeah, I would say like even in the beginning of the season when we were losing, I think we we played a lot of good hockey. Mm. It was just like sometimes just the last 10 minutes yeah, for some sometimes, whatever reason yeah you have to be playing good for 60 minutes if you're gonna win and unfortunately if we had 10 bad minutes we were way too bad to to still keep the game you can be bad but you don't let, let in goals mm. but when we were bad we let in like three three goals and you the game, can't the game do is that. done then. no so and we had so many games when we had like it was even until like the last period and then we just like gave away like one or two easy goals and we could never like but i think now when we do the small things right and i think too like when you get through like rough times when you don't win games you need like the players you, you see the characters mm. if there are people that just like quit and like okay this sucks everything like that but we had a really tight group and i think that's what Guy and the uh, team wanted to create from the beginning when they put this team together like a lot of characters in in, in the players that even what whatever's gonna happen that we're gonna stick together we're gonna play for each other and we're gonna turn this around whatever happens and i think that's what we did as well and it also is a testament to the leadership group, isn't it? You know, yeah. you have Sam Hare, Guy Lapin, yeah. Brian Connolly, and, and even Ollie yeah. about how they galvanize the team. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a pretty so, special group. Yeah, it is. It is. So, as you say, we play a lot of Saturday Sundays. What does Adam Deutsch like to do in the week to relax? And what hobbies and things do you have? I have different. I mean, I'm a, I really enjoy watching football. Yeah, so do, would you like to tell the world who your team is now? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan, but they don't do good at all right now. But don't hold it against him. We still yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, we had a Swedish guy like playing here in the beginning of the season in, for uh, Forest. Uh, oh, okay. Milosevic is called. Oh, okay. So Have you been to see Forest yet? No, I've tried, but it's so hard when we play like Saturday, yeah. Sundays. But I will. I'm sure it will work out itself yeah, yeah, at I some point. Yeah, I promise I'm going to go see. Yeah, but 
for the most part, I think I'm just like a regular guy, just watching TV shows. I have my girlfriend here, going downtown, get a coffee, get some air, just see like the town. She likes to shop, <laughs> do shopping. So <laughs> just like I've been in every store, I think so. So is she Swedish then? Yes. Did you meet her? Is she a ho- for, from the hometown? No, she actually up north, Skellefteå, it's called. Oh, okay. So she's up north. And is she enjoying it over here then? Yeah, she really likes it here, so. And um, have you been, I know you were in London the other day. Yeah. How did you find, was that your first trip to London or have you been Yeah, there? it was our first time, both of us. So it How was, was that? it was amazing. I mean, but it's huge there. I mean. What did you do? We actually went and we wanted to see Big Ben, but they do the reconstruction thing. So you oh, can't okay. really see it. We went a little bit to Buckingham Palace. And then we were the most part on Oxford Street, do the shopping. But for next time, we wanted to go to see like the Winter Wonderland, maybe the London Bridge, and a little more of tourist thing. So you're a big Christmas guy then? Yeah, I love Christmas. There's so many Christmas guys on this team. Yeah, but it's just amazing. Was it my favorite? Christmas. My favorite story is that Mark used to wear the number twenty-five. Oh, really? Because of Christmas. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> yeah. So what's your what, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? I don't know. I would say like, because it must be tough being away from family at this time of year. It is. It is. I would say like, if I would have been home, I would say like, family is the main reason for like Christmas to like see. I mean, everybody is so nice to each other, and they used to say like, Christmas is uh, think you gonna give, you yeah. gonna give like love, like all of that kind of stuff, and I mean, with all of the decorations, like with the christmas stuff that's going on like downtown like markets like have you been to the wonderland here yeah it looks cool it? yeah it's awesome it's awesome so i actually saw the rink down there too maybe gonna you're gonna go, go for a skate <laughs> <laughs> we'll get some nice hard ice yeah, rather than yeah, the soft yeah. one in there yeah, yeah it's gonna be awesome so i'll actually i'll actually i asked mark i asked mark and kevin who i know are two big christmas guys five questions so i'm gonna ask you the same okay five christmas questions yeah. uh favorite christmas movie Ooh, home alone Good choice. I've not seen it. <laughs> you haven't? No, everyone is. You, I, you I, need to, I get told to off every time I say that. Ah. Favorite Christmas song? Ooh. I actually like Do They Know It's Christmas? I think it's Band Aid. Yeah, the Band Aid. Yeah, that's, I like that one. Favorite Christmas food? Mm, well, that's hard. I have to say the meatballs. <laughs> we do have the meatballs in Sweden. Best Christmas present? Ooh, that's hard. I don't know, actually. I would say, like, be around, like, family. And oh, I thought you were going to give me the answer that everyone does. Oh, hockey stick. Oh, Skates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's also a good one. Worst Christmas present. And you can say who gave it you if you really want to. Uh, I would say the basic one for this one is probably, like, socks or something. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I go with socks. Yeah, Mark, I think Mark, Mark ended up getting a, a colouring book or something. It's a very funny story. If you haven't listened to the Mark Matthews episode, go and listen to that. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very, very funny story. Oh yeah, I will. So, and you didn't think your English would be good enough to do this. We've gone, we've gone around or just over an hour now. Oh, that's... I didn't know that. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous in the beginning if my English going to hold on for, for a while. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. I told you I had nothing to worry about. Yeah. So what does... So as we wrap the, start to wrap this up a little bit, what does ice hockey mean to you? What what what, what do you love about this game? Because it I, is one of those games you fall in love with. Yeah. I would say like I've touched uh, in this interview like earlier, but I would say like you meet a lot of new friends. Mm. I would say I have like friends from France, Denmark, Norway. US, Canada, you, you got so many friends that you're like meeting just through like hockey. And to be like I've told before, like to be like you feel like you're a family when you like coming to a new team. And I would say like to always feel like home, even if you're not home, you feel like you are kind of home mm. because everyone is there to do the same thing. And you get like the connection to meet new people and new cities and you have to see like a lot of 
maybe new towns and so i would say like the, other than just like playing hockey it comes so much more and i would say like friends and all of that well, kind of friends stuff. you get to explore new places yes. and, and all kind of things yeah like so that. it's just not just the hockey so you definitely made the right decision when you chose this over football when you were a, a I, kid. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> definitely happy with that choice. Yeah, I'm really happy with that choice. Yeah, well, thank you very much for doing yeah, this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and for having me. never know, I'll get you back on down the line. Yeah. We might, we might do a whole episode on Arsenal. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've got a lot to say about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can be here for a while then. <laughs>